Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we'll be doing my July releases. Let's get going. So my first book is The Mirror of Peace by Alexandra Bracken. This is the number two in Silver and the Bone, which I have not yet read, but it was a part of my TV yard. Never got to finish it. So with the dreams of Avalon and Viren, Tamins and her friends are all that stands in the way of Lord Stead's plan to unleash the horrors of Anwen on the world of the living. As the wild hunt comes and bloody path across continents, Tamsin and his blustering allies, tracking down powerful artifacts and transferring into a new other land in search of a way to stop him. Legend tales of a mirror of beasts, powerful enough to trap even Lord Death on its accursed glass. But the mirror is not all that it seems. Tamsin must confront her own darkest secrets if she hopes to tap the mirror's strength to defeat her enemies. It comes out on July 30th. My next book is The Briar Club by Kate Quinn. Washington, D.C. 1950. Everyone keeps to themselves at Briar Wood House, a down at the heels all female boarding house in the heart of the nation's capital, where secrets hide behind white picket fences. But when the lovely mysterious widow Grace March moves into the attic, she draws her oddball collect collection of neighbors into unlikely friendship. Poised English beauty, Fliss, who is the cane of perfect wife, and mother covers ga gaping in the rounds. Police officer's daughter, Norda, who is entangled with a shadowy gangster. Frustrated baseball star, Bay, whose career has ended along with the Women's Baseball League of World War II. And Poison's Gungo Aline, who has thrown herself at the McCarthy's Red Scare. Grace's weekly attic room dinner parties and window brewed sun tea become a he healing balm on all of their lives, but she hides a terrible secret of her own. When a shocking act of violence tears apart the house, the bright club woman must decide once and for all who is the true enemy in the midst. Comes out on July 9th. My next book is Masquerade by O.O. Sangoyomi. So this is a reimagined 15th century West Africa. Udodo's hometown of Timbuktu has been conquered by the warrior king of Yoruba land. Already shunned as social paradise, living in conditions for Udodo and the other women and her blacksmith guild grow even worse under Yoruba rule. Then, then Udodo is abducted. She is whisked away across the Sahara to the capital city of Sangoti, where she is shocked to discover that her kidnapper is none other than the vagrant who had visited her guild just days prior. But now that he is flooded in riches rather than rags, Udodo realizes he is not vagrant at all. He is the warrior king and he has chosen to be his wife. In a sudden change of fortune, Udodo soars to the very heights of society, but after a lifetime of subjugation, the power that saturates this world of battle and political stabbing becomes too intense to resist. As tensions with viable states grow, revealing elaborate schemes and enemies hidden in plain sight, Rodona must defy the cruel king she has been forced to win by reforging the shaky royalties of the court in her favor, or risk losing everything, including her life. And this is loosely based on the myth of a story, and it will come out on July 2nd. My next one is Sleep Like Death by Kayleen Byron. Only the truly desperate and foolish sinks up the night. An ancient monster who twists wishes into curses. Eve knows this firsthand. One of her mothers was cursed by the night and trapped in the body of a songbird. With the unique ability to communicate with animals and conjure weapons from nature, Eve has trained all her life to defeat him. With more and more villagers torn by the night's corrupt deals, Eve believes she's finally ready to face him. But when Queen Virginia begins acting strangely, talking like she's seemingly normal, isolating herself and lashing out to slightest provocation, Eve must question it if her powers are enough to save her family and her kingdom. It comes out on July 2nd. My next book is The Spell Shop by Sarah, Sarah Beth Durst. So this is like a cottage core cozy fantasy, which is really not my type, but this is really this one really sounds good. Kayla has always had trouble dealing with people and is a librarian of, of the great library of Elysium. She hasn't had to. She and her assistant Kaz, a sedentary spider plant, have spent most of the last 11 years sequestered among the Empire's precious spellbooks, protecting their magic for the city's elite. 
but the relation to Blue is blurring, and when the lightning goes up in flames, she and Kaz steal whatever books they can and flee to the faraway island where she grew up. She's hoping to lay low and figure out a way to survive before the revolution comes looking for her. To her dismay, in addition to a nosy and very handsome neighbor, she finds her town in disarray. The Empire, with its magic spell, looks at slowly be draining power from the island, something that Kiara is indirectly responsible for, and now she's determined to find a way to make things right. Opening up a small shop comes with its own risk. The consequences for sharing with the commoners is death. And as Kayla comes to make a place for herself among the quirky townspeople, she realizes that in order to make a life for herself, she must break down the walls she has kept so high. It comes out on July 9th. My next book is It's Only a Game by Kelsa Yu. Marina Chan ran from her old life. She bought nothing with her, not even her real name. Now she lives in fear of her past being discovered. But when her online gaming team is offered a tour of the favorite gaming company, Marina can't resist accepting, even though she knows it might put her fake identity at risk. Then the creator of the game is murdered during the tour. Whoever killed them plans to play Marina and her friends to the mur for the murder unless they win four rounds of a dangerous game. A game that requires them to lie, trespass, and steal. A game that could destroy everything Marina's worked so hard to build. A game that she might not survive. Comes up on July 9th. My next book is Castle of the Cursed. It is by Ramina Garibald. The house is always hungry. After a mysterious attack claims the lives of her parents, all Estella has left is the determination to solve the case. Suffering from survivor's guilt so intense that she might be losing to her, her grip on reality, she accepts an invitation to live overseas with an estranged aunt at the ancestral Spanish castle La Sombra. Beneath this gothic facade, La Sombra harbors a trove of family secrets, and Estella begins to suspect her parents' deaths may be linked to the past. Her investigation can see, take some supernatural turn when she crosses paths with a silver-eyed boy only she can see. Estella worries Sebastian is on a hallucination, but he claims he has been trapped in the castle. They gradually team up to find answers, and as their investigation ignites, so does a romance, mistrust twined with Ellen Carter's. It comes out on July 30th. My next book is The Night Ends With Fire by K.K. Song. The Three Kingdoms Are at War, but Meilin's father refuses to enter the Imperial Draft. Trapped by his opium addiction, he plans to send Meilin for her drowry. But when Meilin discovers her husband to be as another violent, ill-tempered man, she realizes that nothing will change for her unless she takes matters into her own hands. The very next day, she disguises herself as a boy and listens in her father's place. In the um, army, Meilin's relentless hard work brings some recognition, friendship, and a growing closeness with Sky, a prince turned training partner. But has she simply exchanged one prison for another? As her kingdom battles toward destruction, Meilin begins to have visions of a sea dragon spirit that offers a true power and freedom, but with a deadly price. And this comes out on July 2nd. My next book is A Magic Fierce and Bright by Hema Nayak. Anya wants nothing more than to be lit, left alone, content to be royal to no one but herself in the isolated jungles of South India. She dreams only of finding her lost sister Priya and making enough money to take care of their family. It's too bad that her rare ability to make electric machines using the magic that wiped them out five centuries ago also makes her a committed political pawn. Everyone seems to believe that her technomancy can help them win the endless war for control over the magic supernatural source. These senseless power struggles mean little to Anaya, but when her enemies dangled news of her sister before her, she saw too quick to leave at the chance to bring Priya home, even if it means teaming up with wreckage this reputable thief in order to do it. With the threat of a nation looming larger on the horizon, Adia must reconcile the kind of person she is with the kind of person she wants to be, and untangle the web of intrigue, conspiracy, and dissent that threatens to take all of India down with it. Comes out on July 9th. My next one is A Portrait of Shadow by Mira Mituri. A missing sister, a mysterious boy, and a painting the horse that truth beneath its peeling edge. Ends is missing, but missing things can always be found. May knows this as a fact, even though the police investigation has come to a standstill, even though her parents are moving on. 
But when she goes to clean out her own sister's studio, she mess, finds a mess of research and white canvas that seems even older than the ornate frame it sets in. The closer the maid gets to the canvas, the more difficult it is to pull her eyes away from its modeled surface. Its heavy layers of white paint, its peeling top corner she is tempted to pull to see what's beneath, but she doesn't yet. May decides to trace her sister's last step in the hopes of finding answers, certain that Inez's disappearance is related to the painting, and she knows she is desperate enough to let the strange boy who claims to have been in these neighbor tag along, even if his good looks doesn't help distract him from his avoidance or for questions. Still begins a scavenger hunt, piecing together what they can find from what ends ends the left behind. One that leads to centuries old questions, best left unasked, and secrets best kept in the dark. Comes out on July 16. And my last book is The Haunting of Hecat Cavendish by Paula Braxton. England, 1881. Hailford Cathedral stands sitting along the city, keeping it secret, holding long forgotten souls in its stony embrace. Hecat Cavendish spins through the cobbled streets on her bicycle, skirts hitched daringly high, heading for her new life as an assistant librarian. But this is no ordinary collection of books. The cathedral houses in an ancient chain library, wisdom garnered for centuries, mysterious and stories locked onto its worm. But humble shelves. But the most prized artifact, however, is the medieval world map, which hangs next to Hecat's decks. Little does she know how much the curious people and mythical creatures depicted on it will come to mean to her. Nor does she suspect that there are lost souls waiting for her to in the heart of cathedral. Some will become her dearest friends, some will seek help in finding peace, others will put her in great pearl, and as she quickly learns, threaten the lives of everyone she loves. Comes out on July 23rd. Okay, those are all the books that are coming out in July. Let me know what you're the most excited about. I'm most excited more about the last book that we just read, The Haunting of Hecat. It sounds so deliciously good, so I'm excited to read about that one. But yeah, let me know what you're excited about and please like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post and I will see you in my next one. Bye!